Hi, I'm Cindy. Uh, I am going to be sharing with you uh, some of my thoughts on writing process, specifically on how I came to write uh, two books uh, entirely self-published, entirely without any help, which let me tell you, from the get-go is always a mistake. You'd need to have uh, professionals on hand to do things like editing, cover art, and um, maybe even the website. Uh, more on that in a minute. Uh, I'm also the Municipal Liaison for this region's NaNoWriMo group, uh, which is the Jersey Shore NaNoWriMo. Actually, it's the South Jersey Shore. South Jersey Shore NaNoWriMo, to be exact. Um, and I've been doing that for about, well, this is the third year. Okay. Uh, as to my writing process, I have two books, as I said. Um, the first one was a self-help about living with uh, someone who had bipolar disorder. And that was a project that I wanted to take in, take in hand and, and keep very close to me because uh, I really just didn't want anyone else's hands on it. And I wasn't running it except for therapeutic value for myself. So therefore there have been only a limited number of copies that were available and it is not currently available. Uh, but I'm going to take you through the process of writing my book, uh, Seizure Free and Loving Life, which is um, in part on my own personal journey and in part it is medical information for other people uh, that I chose to share. Um, I was challenged in the summer of 2014 to begin to write a book on the subject. I had been previously involved with uh, epilepsy groups, epilepsy support. And just as a side note, in fact, when America first came online uh, in the 90s, uh, mine was literally the first epilepsy support chat room. And um, I remember talking to, uh, dare I say his name, Steve Jobs, because he used to hang out in the front lobby as they called it. It was like the landing post, the landing area for uh, getting into America Online. He used to hang out there and talk to you uh, all the time about uh, internet safety and um, safety in groups and the importance of moderation, by which I don't mean being a little of this, a little of that. I literally mean moderating a group setting on the internet. Um, but that's a sidebar and a rabbit trail. Um, so as I said, it was the summer of 14, 2014, and um, I'd been participating with other groups. And um, then I began to put it down into a blog. That was the first thing that I did. I had, I had a blog where I would write posts on different topics. One might be my own personal life, my memories of being a child coming up with epilepsy. And then there were other things that I learned along the way, things about the medicines and things about um, supplements and things about exercise and faith and its relationship to living with a, um, a long-term, long-time, lifetime kind of a condition. Um, <clears throat> Epilepsy is a frightening thing. It affects about 50 million people worldwide. Um, one in 26 will be diagnosed with epilepsy. One in 10 will have a seizure at some point in their lifetime. So it's really big stuff and very frightening, both to the person living with it and also to any onlookers who see an event. Um, it also is very expensive. I mean, a trip to the ER costs hundreds of dollars if you're overnight uh, just to go in and be checked out for a couple of hours. Um, a week stay, quite a bit more. 
uh, oh, there's a loss of uh, income from people who have to stay out for an extended stay after uh, with after having an episode or multiple episodes. Uh, some people never get them in control, and so there's a lot of fear. We fear many things. We fear the loss of of job and home and security and relationship. So it's very big, big, big scare there. Uh, so this was an important work for me, as well as something deeply personal. So uh, I began to write the blog, um, and. I wrote it on the Google blog, I think that's Blogger, initially, and I've moved it elsewhere, so I still have my my original blog post out there somewhere. Um, and uh, if you're someone that follows me, you can find it, and I may share that with you at some point, but... Um, um, so when I began to write this um, the book, at the encouragement of people who were following my blog, um, I, I knew I wasn't writing for the medical community, and I have a medical background, actually. So that was a big help, because when I was sifting through the material, a lot of words, a lot of big words that are just Greek Literal, some of them literally Greek, to the average reader. And so the, I felt it was important to find the information, to find out, express these terms in ways that could be easily digested by the average person who's really spending their days trying to cope with a medical condition that has them terrified most of the time. And... Um, that's no small task. So, um, let me think. Um, so this is, this is actually the book that I put together, the title, Seizure Free and Loving Life, and it's all produced by myself. I didn't have any help, and I, as I said, at the outset, that's a mistake. Um, I got lucky. I got lucky, I'll tell you what. I mean, let, me, let me show it to you properly. And I, it came good. I came good. I, I, I used the, the Amazon process and, and and there's the back matter and the photo is from the church directory and um, all of it, the interior, the interior, the front matter, the back matter, I did all of it without help. And as I said, that's always a mistake. It takes away from the writing process for you. It's distracting. It's infuriating. If you don't know what to do, there will be mistakes upon mistakes. And that can interfere with your ability to get it marketed properly. So you don't want to take those chances. Um, that's a lesson I learned. So moving forward... I've learned this between 2000 and <clears throat> 2014 to 2016 when this finally was on the market. And uh, it's a lesson learned. And in my future writings and things I'm writing now, and there's always something I'm writing. But if I choose to publish it, I want to take the proper care and invest in people who uh, know what they're doing. It's their, it's their expertise to get it right. They're more than just proofreaders. And... They're not just trying to annoy the writer because what their job is to make sure that it is sellable. If it's not something you can sell, there's no point to it. You may as well, you know, just write a journal and put it on the shelf somewhere. Which is honestly what I thought I was going to do. Especially with the thir first one. It was therapeutic for me only. And other people have found it. It actually sold somewhere in Germany one year. Um, they liked it. They thought it was a great psychological book. I thought it was just therapeutic, okay? <laughs> um, my second one is personal and... 
I, for that one, I thought it was going to be a very select group. And that too surprised me a little bit because uh, every once in a while, without any marketing on my part, and the people that actually buy it, there was one week it was actually um, number one in the slot. And I forget what category it was, but it was medical, uh, self-help. Uh, I think they had a, a, a little category, a little niche for neurological disorders. And so there was one week it was actually at the top. Um, I have some notes here and I'm trying to look at them without being really obvious. It's not really working for me. Um, but okay. Uh, the book process. So I began to write this and um, doing the research and I'm, I have the books. All the books that I researched. I found at the time I only found four that were written and published. So maybe the fact that I said I was writing, maybe that encouraged some other people to come out. Um, also there used to be a website, I think there still is. Um, encouraging people to talk about it which I thought was phenomenal but I couldn't get in so I had to write my own book another sidebar I know um, <clears throat> so after I guess about a year it took me about a year to get the research done to write it in a rough draft and so now it was 2000 2016 and about the summertime and on on I felt I was ready now to begin to look for the platform where did I want to where, where did I want to put this at did I want Barnes and Noble did I want well I eventually settled on uh, Amazon's create space which was very easy to deal with and had many of the tools that I needed to do it entirely on my own even though I think that's not necessarily a good choice and so I had it I had the interior I uploaded the interior and after a little bit of further revision because there were some issues um, it was uploaded and then came the cover and I had to find something that was going to be good, and I wanted. I, I like the the picture that I chose with a uh, is, a, is is a pair of people. They're just they were if they were in there with on the bicycle, because I wanted to show that living with a medical condition like this is not um, you know it's not it's not a sentence to isolation. Uh, it, you can live a full life. You can do things. You can be athletic and sporty and at least you can ride a bicycle swim there were people who would disagree with that but okay so you don't go into the water without a buddy i don't recommend that anyway but um <clears throat> but you can live a life a full life people who know me would never know that i have anything if i didn't say oh by the way i do uh, and it's this and if i didn't tell them they would never never suspect that i've been told that many times um, so now that I had the book uploaded and I was ready for the artwork and I started to look for the back banner and what I was going to do when as I said I chose the thumbnail is in here it's just that picture is just taken from the church directly they took pictures that was as professional as I got well, that was good. So that's a professional shot. And then I began to think now about distribution, where I wanted to come, how I wanted to be paid, all of that stuff. And losing my train of thought. Sorry. Um. Okay, so now the next thing that I wanted to do was do a website and get myself some branding and some, um, the social media, the site. I put together a website. I built it myself. And there were some good 
good places you can do it. Uh, I, I bought one for a premium and I paid a nice little size of a little a few hundred a year. I got no traction. I get better traction just using the regular Facebook page and my own conversation here and there. So uh, this year I took it down. No point. <laughs> no point. If I'm going to just send everything through the social media, I may as well just leave out the middleman that I'm paying money for. Um, so as I said before, and I'll say it one last time, but I'm just about done. Um, the importance of a team, uh, the editorial team. Yeah, the interior is important. You don't want to skimp on anything. You do not want to skimp on editing and thinking, oh, you can do it yourself. No, you will. Yeah, there are good programs that will help you, but you need a pair of human eyes. AI is not enough. And you're writing, you're going to think it's your, you're going to think it's wonderful because you know what? Your eyes deceive you because you know the words that are on the page. You know what's supposed to be there. So you're going to miss that period that's missing. Or sometimes it might be just a semicolon. Why do you have a semicolon and a period? You know, that might be minor stuff, but then there might be misspelling of words. The wrong spell check might have put in a word for you. That you didn't want to have. You have to have your eyes on your stuff and let someone else trust somebody to do that with you because it can make the difference between a career and a wishful thinking. Um, so. That's basically it. The whole ball of wax. So, thanks. And, um, talk to you later.